Hi everyone, welcome to my uh, first vlog. Um, today I want to talk a bit about a new cool project that I'm uh, working on. So, for those that have been following my, my blog, um, I've been building robots for quite a while. So, I built a rover, um, I built a spider robot, um, and I've done quite some other cool robot stuff. And um, I have actually in the past built once a human robot, but it was using a kit. And now, what I really want to do is actually start designing one from scratch. And, I want to try to really go for a full-size robot, so I'm going for something like roughly a meter high, maybe higher, we'll see how, uh, how big it ends. Um, so I actually started out with just designing uh, yeah, a leg, a pair of legs uh, and some hips, and then design the, the body and the arms and also the head. Uh, so this episode is really going to be about really building the leg. So I've been printing already quite some of the components, you can already see them here. Um, so this is basically the foot of the robot, um, it has two brackets on there that will have the servo block. This block will allow movement uh, like this, but also up and down, so uh, it has two, uh, two, two axes uh, to really uh, move the leg uh, and the ankle. Now then we have basically this part, which is the shin of the, of the leg itself, and um, here we have the thigh. Or I think actually these are the opposite way, so this is actually... Um, the thigh and this is actually the shin. So this is all part of the, the, the leg. Now here we have the knee itself, so a small rotary uh, bracket uh, that will connect the bottom uh, part to the top uh, leg with a servo in between. For the servos themselves, I'm using these. These are uh, Dynamics for servos. Um, I'm using in this particular case the XM430. Um, these are quite powerful servos, um, they are not cheap. Uh, so previously I've been using Dynamixel like AX12, which are the previous generation, or the XL430s. Um, they don't have the necessary torque to really run a robot of a meter plus, so that's why I'm going with these uh, these servos. Um, yeah, so I will assemble this uh, in this uh, this episode, and we'll have the if we're all successful full working leg uh, at the end. Uh, so let's get to it. Uh, also in terms of like how I create these brackets, I'm using a lot of uh, nuts and bolts for these. So these M3 bolts and nuts, uh, these are uh, nylock nuts, nuts that will allow me to really fasten this securely. Um, and this is all printed in ABS. Uh, thickness in general is like 5 uh, millimeters, so it's tough enough to not have too much flex in there and it should have enough stability for the leg itself. So let's get to it. So let's start with the foot and put the circle block back in. So. Yeah, because this servo block is in essence two servos connected to each other. These, these Dynamics servos have this very nice concept of an idler, which allows free rotation on one side while the other side has the servo horn, which actually does the driving movement. But because I make this block of two servos, um, yeah, I have here the actual rotation uh, part of the of the servo, but on the other side there is actually no idler. So I created my own here, so there's a small uh, nut here, and I've printed a small idler which I can just put in through here. And uh, with that it should allow free movement of, uh, of the angle. So let's try that. So as you can see now, um, in essence the servo is now able to move this way freely and we have basically a fully working foot with the idler on this side. So next up is connecting the actual shin to it. So this is in essence relatively simple. Um, so here we have the servo idler, the servo horn. In the shin I have the necessary holes for this, it's just be a matter of sliding this over and connecting it. So again, I need to make sure that the servo horn is set in the right middle position, which it is. It's just a matter of putting the servo screws in there.
So, there we have it. It's now basically full anchor movement here. And actually the bottom part of the leg is done. All right, next up, we're gonna connect the servo that is going to run the knee. So I have this small ABS bracket that's connected to the servo. So you can see that here. Um, yeah, this is actually connected with four bolts on this side. The servo cable coming out of it, and this is going to go into the holes for the bolts on here. So let me put those through. So here we have a new servo on top of it. So this servo cable has to go into the motor below. So let's do that quickly. So on the bottom there's also actually um, yeah, two uh, servos. So I have to connect both of them. So uh, these dynamics and servers have this loop through system. So one servo can connect to the next one. So let me get that done. All right, so in this next part, so we've attached the servo, the leads are attached. So now we need to actually put the joint for the knee on top of it. I already prepared this. Should I slide on? So what we need to do is also make sure the position of the servo is correct in the middle center position. So there we go. So we have the knee. Knee is the bracket. This bracket will go to the top part, the thigh. The shin itself is functional now. So in essence, we already have quite a nice part of the leg established. So let's now work on attaching this thigh itself. So this thigh attaches here via a number of bolts that go through here into the bracket that's attached to the knee. So let's get that attached. So there we have it. The full leg is assembled. So here's the knee, the ankle, and the foot, and the thigh. And on top of that, we'll put the uh, hip. So I already have prepared that. So the hip, in essence, contains two parts: as a rotation movement, allow the leg to move around its axis. Um, but we also have uh, something that allows to move the leg from the left to right. And of course, something that allows it to move forward and backward. Uh, so it's three axes of movement, so X, Y, Z. Um, so let me first attach the first two. So we have obviously the rotational component that is a heavy servo. So this is the one um, that's going to allow the leg to rotate around its axis. This is going to be attached to the one that actually allows the leg to move up and down. So for this, I had actually bought a more powerful servo, which is the XM540. This is a higher torque servo, uh, should be able to carry a lot more of the weight, uh, because this one will mainly always be on carrying the majority of the 
the way to the robots. Um, so this one needs to be more powerful. That was the idea. I don't think Percussion need all that power, but then to be safe and sorry. Um, so I'm gonna attach that, and um, yeah, we'll do the one together with the rotational axis. So let's look here. So there we go. So on top of the leg, we have now the servo. That's the beginning of the hip. And on top of that, we'll put the rotational servo. So that's the next step. So, in essence makes full leg. On top of this, we now have this. This one will do the rotational component. On top of this, there's going to be a bracket like this. And that will contain here the last servo, which is the main part of the hip, which will attach it to the main body itself. So, let's attach this as well. There you have it, one completed leg. This will go to the last servo that will be attached to the main body. That will be uh, something we'll look at in the next episode. So let's do some wiring quickly. All right, so. Let's start testing this out. Now we need to provide some power to the servos. So we have for this, the small SMPS, um, yeah, uh, 12 volt DC uh, power supply uh, switching unit that can connect to a 12 DC power supply, which I have here lying around. This one has the old type of Dynamics hole cable, so we have to convert that into the new um, connector. So let me see if we can find the connector cable for the TED. Let's have lying on here. So then also I need to connect an actual USB controller. Which I will connect to the other side of the power switch unit, which I then will connect to the servos. Right. Now let's connect the USB controller to the USB port. Tools provide some power. Right. So that should be the entire power setup. Now, what we're trying to, going to try to do is actually let the leg stand on its own. Right? So, if I now put it up, it's not enough, it was, it's too heavy. Will not really stand on its own. So let's actually try the power up and see what happens here. So, what I've done is I've written a piece of Java code that can actually call my uh, U2D2 Dynamixel uh, USB controller. This one connects actually to the servos. So, the servos are actually serial based. Um, so, it's a small serial protocol, it's well documented uh, on the Robotos website. 
which I have written also in Java. And I've built a small uh, web interface on top of that, so I can just control the server host um, via a small Java program that has a web interface running on top of this. So, let's get this started. Starting the Java software. So, I've started up the software. Now, if you see, the leg is still quite pliable at this moment. Um, so, let's see what happens if we actually put it on this position and enable the torque. Uh, you can see actually that it holds right now. I'm holding it at the foot, but actually, all the servers remain in place. It's completely rigid. Now, let's disable the torque again. So, it's kind of pliable again. So, let's put it up in a standing position. In the hip. So now we have the leg completely standing free. So my hands are in the air and completely on its own power. So it's not entirely perfectly straight, but it's something we can work on in the next uh, few iterations. So there's the leg. I can hold it here, completely stiff. So we have our first very successful test with a leg. So what I'll do next is I'll just build the second leg in the next episode we'll attach them to the main body. So we should hopefully have an actual robot body with legs that can stand up. So I hope this really uh, interests everyone a bit into robot building and with some really, yeah, cool robot servers you can get really really long distance so you can actually buy the cheaper version of these servos right so you don't have to go for these very expensive ones so you can build a smaller version of this robot for me this is really about the next step and really trying to build that next iteration robot and uh, yeah hope you enjoyed watching this and uh, hope to see you in the next episode thank you